Our next speaker joining us remotely is Joao Almeida. He's the CTO at OpenNode. Hi, Joao. Hello, everyone. Great. Thanks for having me today. Uh, my name is Joao Almeida. I help run OpenNode, and I'm here today uh, to share some Lion Network data that we have been collecting uh, while uh, operating our business. So just for those that are not familiar, uh, where we, we provide payment infrastructure and act as a payment processor for a number of businesses. Uh, we were one of the first teams uh, to offer aligning uh, in early 2018. And since then, uh, we've been among the most uh, active participants in the network. Um, as an early player, uh, we've managed to gain a significant uh, role by collecting uh, valuable data uh, that allows us to create this reliable infrastructure. So the goal of my, the goal of my presentation uh, is to share real data uh, from our node and business and business perspective. I hope this encourages other companies and node operators uh, to share similar data uh, so we can identify activity and uh, further improve the network as a whole. So as opposed to on-chain data uh, that, is, that uh, lives on a public ledger, just like we saw in the previous presentation, the Lightning, the, the Lightning Network transaction data is not shared uh, publicly. So, which means the transaction data is only shared uh, by the parties involved in the actual transactions, either if you're routing or receiving or sending. Because of this feature, there is only a small set of data that is publicly available, such as the total network capacity, number of channels, etc. However, uh, this does not paint the full picture of the network. Uh, since every participant has their own unique perspective of the network, we're left with multiple uh, different data sets. And so today I want to offer the, uh, the perspective from, from OpenNode side. So to start, let's, let's take a look at our overall line, lining transaction volume. So outgoing transactions uh, represent payouts in our platform and incoming payments are transactions received. So since November, 2018, uh, we've processed a total of 100, 120,000 transactions on the chart, we can observe an exponential growth uh, from December to March, peaking in March. Uh, this timeline coincides with the launch of major LN products and applications such as Blue Wallet, the Tipping Me, Wallet of Satoshi, Lightning Chess, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. From March through April to April, we can observe a 50% drop. So this was most do due to one of the first laps uh, being sold, actually. Line, I'm talking about line speed. Uh, we can see, we can, we can basically see here that our transaction volume is really high, highly correlated with lap activity. And the problem is that most lining applications, they die off after the initial high. So that's why we see this um, trending going down. However, overall, we feel proud to be partly responsible for this first wave of apps by providing um, a simple and uh, sim simple API for developers to build that. So in our early, another thing that matters is that the fact in our early stages, uh, our customers were mostly uh, LN enthusiasts. And as our merchant base grew and became more diverse, the transaction value increased. And as a result of there, as a result of that, the, the, the lining uh, share of the transactions out decreased. So today, uh, the lining, uh, lining network uh, value uh, that we receive represents less than 1% of the total transaction value on our platform. So really small. But it's not all bad news. Um, although the LN payments volume declined over the last year, the percentage of lining payments over $20 has been steadily increasing. We observe the growing trend on usage for e-commerce and service purchases. So the 15% peak that you guys see on the chart corresponds to the sales of the Bitcoin 2020 early bird ticket sale. So a lot of people actually purchase their tickets uh, through Lightning. We expect uh, these to keep growing uh, significantly, significantly uh, especially with the introduction of new on-ramps, such as LN Strike and Azure. If we look at our outgoing transactions, uh, Lightning still dominates our payout volume, 
which is over always over 90 percent however uh the value transfer is really small again when compared to our on-chain and bank transfers less than one percent so we dug deeper and analyzed our most popular outgoing uh, lightning transaction destinations and we observed that our top five are actually represented by custodial services only so the, what this data shows is that custodial wallets are still the favorite way for people to interact with Lightning, mostly due to its uh, ease of use. You can also see that Blue Wallet leads both in transaction volume and value with 34% of all our Lightning outgoing transfer volume. However, uh, Phoenix and Breeze are slowly getting traction, but they are harder to track. We can only see their activity via payments routed on channel activity because they're not the final destination, but we'll look at that after. We also analyzed how many ops it took for our transactions to reach their final destination. And we observed that 92% of the transactions were processed via two ops, and we observed as many as seven ops. However, this led us to a question. Are the 92% transactions processed via two ops because most of the outgoing destinations are custodial services? or are we actually efficiently connected to the network? So we went ahead and separated the transactions. We found out that still 80% of the payments were successfully delivered using at most two ops. So this shows that open node is actually very efficiently connected to the network. Moving now to our channel metrics, uh, at the time of research, uh, we had 822 open channels. Our node's liquidity is balanced, meaning we have around the same value on channels as our counterparties, and the inbound and versus outbound payments uh, are also well balanced. Um, since the inbound and outbound payments are balanced, our general, general liquidity uh, automatically becomes balanced when we don't take uh, into account routing. So as a result, there is not uh, much effort needed to balance our channels. And this is due to the way our business uh, operates because we do both payouts and uh, receive transactions. So this is good. So these charts show us the current liquidity that we own in each of our open channels. So if you run a personal node or a wallet, you're not interested in running payments at all. So the ideal chart will be having most of the possible dots at a fifth in the middle at the 50% local balance. However, as a merchant platform, most of the largest lining transactions are incoming payments, paying for goods and services. So it's important to have a good amount of inbound liquidity represented by the left side of the, of the chart. For those that are uh, unfamiliar with lining, uh, there are basically three types of channel closures. Cooperative close, when both parties are online and agree to settle the funds on chain. Force close when one of the parties is offline. And finally, uh, a bridge close that happens when uh, a party broadcasts an out-of-date commitment transaction and the affected party detects it and broadcasts what we call the justice transaction, sweeping all the funds. We had one bridge close uh, in our, uh, since our node's lifetime and happened a year ago. We believe it was not intentional but back in the days, uh, there was no data loss protection to prevent this. So if these were happen today, the funds will probably go, uh, the funds that the other party own will probably go to them. But it did not happen a year ago. We got access to all the channel liquidity, even though it was not on our side. Um, we have one abandoned channel. So an abandoned channel is a channel that we manually removed from uh, our database, let's say. Uh, so. This channel was a channel affected by the recent lining uh, vulnerability in the clients. So basically, uh, really simple, the vulnerability is the, the fact that the funding transaction for the channel, the open transaction, the, the value does not match the actual uh, value that your clients uh, think the transaction, the, the channel has. So the good news, though, is that this channel never wrote any payments, so there were no losses at all. Our actual, uh, another interesting fact is that uh, our average channel duration is around five months uh, and out. Most of the channels uh, closed due to interoperability problems. There, been, there is a, been an increase. It's way better than before now, but uh, due to interoperability problems and also fee spikes. That's the, the main reason the channels closed. 
So a couple of weeks ago, BitMEX Research uh, released a report with the estimation public channel count and the public channel value on the network based on chain analysis of the, um, the channel closure transactions. So we did the same analysis, but utilizing our actual uh, channels data sets and observed that 82% of our channels were public versus the 72% uh, reported by BitMEX. And 97% uh, of the channel capacity uh, was allocated in public channels. Our private channel value, uh, our average private channel value uh, is around uh, 0. Uh, 0. 0.075 Bitcoin, so $65, uh, while the average public channel value is 0. 0.06 Bitcoin, $530. So we are looking at a uh, eight times bigger. So public channels on average have uh, eight times bigger uh, Bitcoin allocated in private. Okay, so moving on to routing and fees. So we've routed over 30 Bitcoin, over, uh, over 9,000 transactions through the Lightning Network, and most of them happen in 2020, as you guys can see on the color uh, side. The first two big spikes that you guys see on the chart, volley routed and fees earned respectively, were due to the Lightning Torch back in 2019. Um, and the color side of the graph, we can observe a growing trend in routing activity, mostly due to two experiments that we did around our channel policies. So we applied a grid approach uh, from mid-November to January, followed by an altruistic one. So on the greedy approach, our node was earning on average 3,000, making on, our, on average 3,000 sats per day versus 100 sats on the altruistic one. So we're looking at 20 times less uh, fees earned per day. You, can, you guys can see that is represented by the yellow chart, the yellow line. So as expected on the altruistic experiment, significantly more transactions than Bitcoin uh, were, routed, were routed through our node. So we picked that 1.23 Bitcoin on a single day, and we were looking at an average of 0 0.35 Bitcoin routed daily. So what, what these results tell us is that there is a lot of room to experiment with fees, especially if you are a highly connected node on the network. Another thing that we notice is that a, low, a lower CLTV than default helps getting more routing activity, even though the fees are slightly higher than most of the channels in the network. Uh, the 0.0089% fee on the, on the greedy approach was not arbitrary. Uh, at the time of the experiment, uh, one of the biggest players in the network, lnbig.com, had a fee of 0 0.009 uh, on all of their channels. So we decided to go uh, a little bit below. Channel activity uh, is an important metric because it allows us to see what routes are being used the most and allows us to make decisions on what channels should we keep open and potentially new routes to open. And as a routing node and the business, our goal is to maximize this channel activity. As observed in the chart, most of open node channels have a, a really high uh, activity. On the color part of the chart, you can see the performance of our Wombo channels. So Wombo channels are channels that uh, have their capacity above the default uh, network limit. So only three of the current, currently open Wombo channels have an activity below 50%. So what this means is that the sum, of, the sum of payments received and sent is smaller than the actual channel capacity right now. Another interesting thing that we can observe is that there is actually quite a lot of demand for blue wallet and fold routes, as it looks like they have a couple of highly, uh, very highly act, uh, active channels. So one thing that we could do here is we, will, we could probably explore raising the fees on these high, uh, highly active channels, uh, or maybe provide more liquidity to these services. So 21 out of the 2100 open node channels um, closed and open have routed over one Bitcoin. Two of the channels that actually make this list uh, are not associated with any business or services. And Blue Wallet, not, uh, not surprised, is the most common channel owner. Breeze makes the list, indicating that there is some traffic going to and from their node, which acts as a gateway for other client wallets. So 
it, it also tells us there is some activity on their wallets, which is, it, it, it means that people are actually using Bridge to transact on the network. Uh, an interesting and fun fact is that BitPi, the number one, uh, was a known entity to us before the analysis. Uh, they're basically a wallet uh, focused on the Asian markets. Uh, an interesting fact is that they routed over 48 times the channel capacity, eight coins. In regards to the top earners, uh, Async and Boo Wallet own most of the top earning channels, and one private channel is among the top earners. Uh, Abacus Routing, a service and uh, entity in the network, owns both the first and most profitable channels. They were the channel initiator. So we went further and analyzed payments, uh, the payment size being routed through our node and observed that there were occasionally transactions that were being routed over the default payment limits of 0 0.0429 Bitcoin. And we, we also saw that most of these transactions were coming from Async, Bull Wallet, and LNB nodes, channels. And the largest uh, single forward amount was 0 0.05 Bitcoin. Based on the outgoing channel data, uh, we inferred that Birofill was issuing invoices over the payment limits. I later confirmed this by uh, reaching out to them directly. Uh, our node uh, routed the first payment above the limit back in December. So this leads us to believe that the payment change, the payment limit change on bridge refill services were, was done uh, around the same time. So some conclusions based on, on this data analysis. We're looking at a trend from shifting uh, from microtransactions to larger transaction size on the network. This is mostly due to like the network getting more mature, there is more liquidity, the error rates are dropping, you can actually pay uh, uh, things with a bigger value than before with more success. Most people still use custodial wallets, but async and breeze are getting traction. There's still increasing demand for Wombo channels since they still have a high, they have a high channel activity. However, uh, we believe that AMP may change this because the fact with AMP is that it can split one single payment in multiple payments. So it makes this less depend on, on the, the capacity of the channels you want, the size of the channels you want, but more like you can spread the payment across all the channels. So we need to wait to see. Uh, there are a lot of opportunity in the fee market. We're gonna keep experimenting. And we also observe that some node operators uh, lift their default payment limit size on the network. Thank you. Thank you, Shraw. We have a question. We have about two, time for two or three questions. If anybody would like to make their way to the microphone. So I think we'll continue on to the, oh, we have a question coming up, yeah. Uh, hi, I have a question about the point point, about, uh, let me check it. Uh, about the rules and the events about the light, about the long graph. Yeah. Back. Back. Oh, yeah. Yeah, here. I want to know what the events stand for. So what's the difference of events and wallow? Wallow means about trading, right? Trading all of. But how about the events? So events are number of transactions routed. Transaction? Um, yeah, number of transactions routed. The number, like 10 transactions, 20 transactions. Oh, so, okay, makes sense. And the, mm -hmm. and the blue line is the, the actual size of the transaction. Mm. The actual size of the, the amount of money that was routed. Okay, awesome. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you, Joao. Thank you. <laughs> 